Hey, I'm Jamie Lee with birdtricks.com and I'm a parrot trainer. And one of the things that I often hear or read about on blogs is people asking, Hey, what should I do with my bird? I just brought it home. What's the first thing I should do? Should I just leave it in the cage to settle in? And almost every time, 100% out of the time, people will say, yeah, let your bird settle in for a few days before even approaching it. Just give it plenty of food and water and let it get used to its new surroundings. And I 100, probably 500% disagree with that. And I'm going to show you why. I actually brought home a camelot macaw who was around seven years old. She had never known me before. This was her very first time meeting me, coming to my house, or anything like that. And I immediately interacted with her and she had one hell of a first day with me. And I'm going to share it all with you and the reasons that I did what I did. One of the reasons that I immediately spend time with a bird that I first bring home is because everything is new, including you. And I like to establish that I'm a person of trust. I'm a person of interest. And I want the bird to immediately bond with me and want to spend time with me. I also want to do that by creating a language that we both can speak. I want the bird to understand that I understand the bird. And we create our own language in the process of bonding and I am just really keen on reading body language and getting those signs. You should never get bit by a bird because they show you a zillion signs leading up to a bite that you can read or choose to ignore and then act upon it. So I'm going to share all this with you. I waited for Morgan to let herself out of her cage, her travel carrier. I didn't want to pull her out, force her out, lure her out. I definitely offered her breakfast, but she could reach it while inside the cage as well. Um, I wanted her to come out on her own. The other thing I did was I introduced her to my birds. So that she knew other birds like her were around in the area. Oh, she got poofy with you. <laughs> You're not even going to say hi? Oh, beefing out on the toes. I didn't want to overwhelm her, but she at least got to meet my three macaws, which went really well. Good girl. Good girl. Look, I got my breakfast. Let's keep this open. Don't close on you. You got your breakfast. So I think it's really impressive here to note that it only took Morgan eight minutes to eventually come out of her travel carrier on her own. Um, it felt like a long time to me, but it was actually pretty extraordinary. And I just kept going about my normal routine and putting her carrier away. And then I made myself breakfast to be able to enjoy with her, um, just to make her a little bit more comfortable around me and make it so that we could do something that was kind of bonding together. But turned out she was way more interested in my breakfast than her own. Also, you're about to notice when Morgan walks, you're going to kind of see her bum left foot. And um, that is a challenge that we're going to be dealing with the entire time with her because that's kind of here to stay. She did have one toe amputated um, and the rest of her foot is somewhat functional as far as she can move her toes. But yeah, yeah the foot is pretty much just like that and there's nothing they could really do. Good morning, Patty. Morgan and I are having breakfast together. Her breakfast, my breakfast. Hey, that's mine. How rude. Well, don't worry about a thing. All right, Morgan's getting an idea of the morning routine. It was really important for me to show Morgan my routine with my own birds and let her get some observational learning in there. So I let her hang out on a perch while I took care of my own birds for the morning and didn't do anything differently so that she would get used to it. I used the vacuum when I would vacuum. I used the broom when I would sweep. Um, I did everything identically and she did really, really well. She actually flew, which is the exciting thing because my goal is to free flight train her eventually for outdoors, but obviously starting indoors first. So I was really excited about this. She stepped up really nicely for me 
and just everything worked out great. This shoulder habit stuff we gotta break. Forgot about my tea that is probably cold. I'll show you where I set Morgan. She goes there super easy. I felt like Morgan had a really exciting morning for the most part, everything that I exposed her to. So I wanted to have her go through some downtime. I did some live videos with her via Instagram and Facebook, and then I let her just chill on my chair while I worked. And she got really, really content and just started preening and hanging out super calmly and I was really, really excited. And then an awesome moment happened and she let me pet her for the very first time, which I did not expect on day one. Still day one with Morgan, who's hanging out with me while I work and Morgan Jorgensen happily, uh. happily preening until Dave had to talk. <laughs> Check it out. She's like, what are you doing with that camera? No. Guys, I'm so excited. Check this out. Hey Morgan, can I pet you? <gasps> oh, what a good girl. Good girl. So obviously I was really excited that Morgan let me pet her, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't just like a fluke or one-off thing. So this clip really shows my signal that I give to her that my intention is to pet her. And then she can respond by telling me in equal body language, yes or no. And so I've been really excited that we basically made our first form of communication in me being able to tell her, hey, this is my intention and her saying, yes, I do want that intention, or no, I prefer not to. Um, so this was really, really yeah. an exciting breakthrough for us. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> okay, so my main goal with Morgan is to flight train her. And my first step in doing that is creating a bond where she wants to be with me. So that was kind of my entire um, goal all day on day one. And then I would just encourage her to fly to me as often as possible. And she really resisted. I think the main culprit of it is her bum foot. You know, she can't balance very well on her own. And so she really doesn't trust someone else to do that for her. So I needed to establish that, hey, I understand how to work with this foot. And I got you. Okay, everyone. Day one still. And I've been trying to convince Morgan to fly to me because she wants to be with me. She flew to my back the first time. I think because she doesn't trust me to catch her with her bum foot. <laughs> Ooh, she just gave me the chills down my back because she is like picking at the back of my neck. Um, she's just messing with my ponytail. So literally, I tried to convince her to do a short flight. She wouldn't do it. I walked away and I heard her and saw that she was trying to fly to me. So I put my arm up and I kind of caught her between like my elbow and my shoulder. And her reward, because she doesn't seem to be doing this whole treat thing. Her reward is playing with my ponytail. So, literally, this is the reward. Jinx does this stuff, man. I have like a bigger Jinx now. So she's just obsessed with my hair, which is fine. You can use that as a reward. But yeah, I'm so excited. She's already flying day one. This is amazing. So I'm gonna keep trying. Okay. So we have a major shoulder bird. This is going to be probably the biggest time suck of all the training. <sighs> it's way harder to get her down because she only has one good foot. So she like doesn't trust that other things will help her balance. So I'm gonna try a chair. I'm gonna try a perch, I'm gonna try the um, counter, and I'm gonna try to all keep it in the video screen. Wait, is this bum foot? I can't tell. 
which side. I still don't really know which side is the bum foot. I still can't even tell. I think I have the good one. I have the good one on my side. Okay. So good foot is on this side, which is why this is so difficult. I wish she was on my other shoulder. So I'll have to keep that in mind. Excuse me. Excuse me. Morgan. <laughs> Morgan. There we go. Are you doing it? She's not. She's not? No. Can't yeah. tell what I'm feeling. I also think, no, that's a good foot. My sweater actually was tangled in that other foot. Is that what was going on? You were such a good sport about it. Not a good sweater to wear. I need to switch my sweaters. We're gonna try this. See if this will help the whole shoulder issue because I think part of the reason was her like feet were stuck actually in my sweater. Well, it's just the same color. Then switch. I did switch. Switch a different color. Do you want to fly again? Do you want to fly? Mom. Huh? Please just put that back. Put what back? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Sorry. so proud of you. I am so proud of you. You're doing it. You can hang out for a while, but not up on my shoulder. There, no, no. I'm hey. putting you down if you try to go up. Good girl. Good girl, Morgan. What a good girl. Good job. Her eyes are spinning right now. Good job, girly. So we're going to use praise on that one instead of playing with my hair because I really don't want her on my shoulder. So our next breakthrough came in the form of Morgan accepting my husband Dave and all of this so far has happened before noon on day one so that is just amazing. Um, I'm kind of blown away by my own progress on this first day with Morgan. I continued to try to get her to fly to me but unless my back was turned she was not likely to do it. Um, actually not likely meant not at all. So she would not fly to me if I just kind of asked her. But she would fly if I wasn't paying attention and had my back to her so that she could land on my shoulder, which was a problem. So I'm going to walk you through the next couple of training phases where I had my major breakthroughs. I don't know, but I think I might have found a treat that Morgan likes. So I'm going to try to ask her to fly for it. I made myself some toast with peanut butter on it. Okay, you want to try this? Can you come? Come on. You jump, you get the whole thing. You jump, come on. Come on, come on. You can do it. Ori, do you wanna turn around and come this way? Can you turn around? Turn around and come this way? I know, I know you wanna step up, but I want you to fly. Girl, look, you can have the whole thing. I'll give you the whole thing, you just jump. Come on, you can do it. I'll catch you, I promise. Catch you, I promise. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Morgan. Morgan, come on. Not happening, is it? Not happening? Can it happen short? She's trying to reach. Jump. Jump. You can do it. You can do it. I promise you can do it. Let's do that. It's okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Look how steady I got you. I got you so steady. I 
got you so steady. Go ahead. You can go back. Go back. No. You don't want to go back. Okay. Well, I still got you. I still got you. See, I got you steady. We're going to learn how to use this foot super good, okay? <clears throat> We're going to get this. We are. Now, if you go back, I'm going to give you another piece. Yeah, I'm going to give you another piece. You just got to step onto here. Are you serious? You can do it. Go on. Step, step. I'm going to spell lanai. <laughs> Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Go on. You can do it. Step up on it with your good foot. Good foot first. You got it. Come on. Oh, you're climbing up, aren't you? Okay. Okay. Do it this way. Good girl. Good girl. Good job. That's what I wanted. That was so good. That was so good. Easy, right? You got it. We gotta go beak first, that's the trick. Okay, I can do that. I can help you do that. My reward? Mm -hmm. So I think one of the big things with Morgan is she needs to trust that I'm not gonna let her fall or cause her to fall. So we're gonna work on just like coming to me and going back on to something. You wanna come? I don't want beak first. I want foot first. Do you want this? Okay. So can we work on step? I don't want beak first. I want your foot first. Good. Good girl. That's what I wanted. Okay. Now I totally gotcha. And going on to another object, you can use your beak first. Good. Good girl. See, you use your beak first on other objects. Foot first for me, okay? Good job. So proud of you. It's going to be the key for us. Is that sort of communication. I need to clearly communicate to her that she can use her beak first on other things, but I want her foot up for me. So... So foot first for me. Nope. I want foot first. Give me your foot first. I know it's difficult. Good girl. Good girl. That was so good. Okay. Beak first. Good girl, Morgan. You got it. Crumbs on my chair. I hope you guys can see that super well. I consider that total communication breakthrough. Foot first. Good girl. I got you. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, you just got a peanut butter that time. And can we go down? Good girl. I'm gonna try again. Foot first. Good. I got your foot. It's okay. I got you. You're done balanced. Good job. What do you do? Beak first to help. Good job. So I'm going to leave it at that for our training session. <clears throat> Seems crazy short, but we're both enthusiastic. And it's very um, compelling to want to go until she stops, but I really don't want her to end the session. I want her to be anxious to do that again. So stopping there. That was awesome. Good, good breakthrough. Thanks for wiping your face all over my chair. One of the main reasons it can be so hard to flight train parrots is because they do not already understand that flight is a means of transportation. So one of the things that I really like to instill in a parrot that I'm trying to teach that to is observational learning for one, seeing other birds use their feathers as a means of getting where they want to go. Also that other birds get more attention for flying and just to learn that, hey, that's a better way to get you from point A to point B. Um, when birds understand this and start using flight as a means of transportation, that is really the key. You don't want them crawling down something and walking to get there. You want them to learn flight is much more effective.
Thank you. I want your foot first. Foot first. Good. Big step. Good girl. Morgan. 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 Uh, uh, uh. Morgan. So one of the cool things that I did take away from this, even though using Tusa did not provoke or convince Morgan to take flight, is her body language during this. If you really pay attention, she is so excited by the prospect of flying. I can tell she wants to do it so badly, but the confidence just isn't there. The confidence in herself and the confidence in me is not there enough for her to take that leap and take that chance on us. So I cannot wait to get there with this bird. I know we will. Yeah, I wasn't ready either. Tried to catch her on my hand, but she got me that time. <laughs>